Hello, this is RV Vagabond Jerry. And I'm making this video from the airport in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. A place where I never wanted to be, never intended to go, but somehow I found myself here. So first let me show you a few seconds of where I am. This is looking outside the window from the lounge that I'm in. And there's a Malaysia Airlines plane. And I am in a special lounge that is for people who have been detained by the authorities here at the airport. It's a nice lounge with free food and drinks. And I'll tell you in a few minutes why I'm here. Now the last video that I made was from the Lido deck of my cruise ship where I gave you an update of how the cruise was going at that point. And after doing that video, I expected to do a whole lot more tour videos. However, due to events I'm going to tell you about, it turns out that there would be no more tours at all. What I had done at that point was the last tour I was going to take so that's why you're getting two update videos in a row. So for the first 14 days of my cruise, everything went on schedule. I was really enjoying it, had a good time. And then when it came time the next day to go to Hong Kong, that's when everything started falling apart. And the guided tour I was supposed to take in Hong Kong got canceled because we got to Hong Kong a day late. So I did that city bus trip around town that I did a video of. And then the next day we were supposed to go to Manila, Philippines. Well, as we were approaching Philippines, the Philippines government said, sorry, we don't want your cruise ship here. <laughs> And that was due to their fears that some of our people on the cruise ship might have even though the captain tr tried to tell them that no one did, they didn't believe us. And in fact, for the entire cruise on my ship, unlike a few others in Southeast Asia, not a single person on my ship had the virus. In fact, I never heard of a single person on my ship getting sick of anything. So then we headed towards South Korea at the port we were supposed to stop at. South Korea snubbed us too. They said we don't want your people here. <laughs> so then we headed to Japan where we were supposed to make I think five different stops at ports in Japan including Tokyo where we were supposed to all get off the ship and fly back home from. Well as we were approaching Japan we got word that Japan did not want us anywhere near their islands. So the captain got busy trying to find any other ports where we could go to at least for the purpose of just letting our people fly out. Because he announced that at this point the cruise is over. There's going to be no more tours. In fact, we ended up getting snubbed by six countries. China, Japan, Philippines, Thailand, Taiwan, and South Korea. None of those countries <laughs> would let us dock. Now, we did dock one day at Thailand, but we were not allowed to take any tours. And that's the day that I just rode the city bus around Taiwan and did a video there. So at that point, the captain was just trying to find some port somewhere where we could at least get off the ship, get to an airport, and get everyone flown home. And they even tried Guam, which is a United States-owned island. Guam said, no, we're not going to allow you to dock here either. Snubbed by our own country, the United States. And it's all due to the scare or fears or paranoia. So let me give you some numbers as to what I was expecting on this cruise 
and what actually happened. I was supposed to visit nine countries. We only got to six countries. We were supposed to stop at 18 ports. We stopped at only 11. I purchased 27 guided tours. Ended up taking only 12. All the others were canceled on me and refunded. So after Japan and Guam rejected us, we started heading back south, looking for some country somewhere that would let us get off and get to an airport. So on that last part of the cruise, we had nine days in a row when we were just floating around the ocean and nobody, no country would let us stop. In nine days at sea, it's probably more than it would take to cross the whole Pacific Ocean from California to Japan. So that really got tiring and boring. So for the last eight days, the ship started giving us free Wi-Fi and free telephone calls so that we could notify people back home as to what was going on. And I made full use of that free Wi-Fi, which I have never had on a ship before, mostly for doing Facebook and YouTube and things like that, although I still could not upload videos. But warm cans of Coke was still three dollars. <laughs> the captain and the cruise line's home office, which is back in Holland, for this Holland America cruise line, there were numerous people working on a solution to get our people back home. So I think the cruise line did a good job of handling the situation. I would give them an A, maybe not an A plus, but they did a good job and they turned out to be very generous with this. For my 30 day cruise, which I paid $4,446, they gave everyone a 50% refund. So I got a credit to my credit card account of $2,223, which has already shown up on my account. Plus, they were giving everyone a credit on our accounts for a future cruise of 50%. So I got back my entire $4,446 cruise fare. And of course, the cruise line, which normally takes in quite a few millions of dollars in a cruise, they <laughs> this turned out to be a total loss, a total loss for the cruise line. But I got to hand it to them. They were pretty generous in what they did. Essentially, they gave me back my entire cruise cost, at least for the cruise fare. And I got refunded, and I'm going to get a credit also for all the tours I didn't take that I had already paid for. Now, what scared all of these countries into rejecting us was due to the fact that there were two other cruise ships in the area that did have the there was one that had just a few cases and then there was another ship that had dozens of cases and even though the captain tried to explain to all the authorities that our ship had zero cases they still just didn't trust us so that was the whole root of the problem so after feverishly searching for a port that would take us, we finally got rescued by Cambodia at the port of Sanukville, which early in the cruise, we did stop there and take a guided tour of Cambodia. So Cambodia turned out to be very friendly and accommodating, and they made a big fanfare of Cambodia rescuing this cruise ship that was snubbed by so many countries. Now as you may remember from my previous videos, 
we were originally supposed to end the cruise in Shanghai and fly out of there. That got changed to Tokyo. So I had to call my airline and change my outgoing flight from Shanghai to from Tokyo. Paid an extra fee for that. And then when Tokyo rejected us, Bangkok, Thailand agreed to let us get off there and just to go to the airport so our people could fly out. But when the ship arrived in Bangkok, they changed their mind and said, no, we changed their mind. We're not going to let you dock here at Bangkok to go to the airport. So that's what led us to Cambodia. Now, at that point, since everyone had already changed their flight reservations twice individually for the people who booked fare individually, which I did, the cruise line decided to take over booking the airfare to get everyone home and pay the fees for the airfare to get everyone home. So from where we docked at Chinookville, Cambodia, we got bus to the local airport and from there my group at least was flown to Kuala Lumpur so that we can make connections for international flights going home. The flight from Chinookville, Cambodia to Kuala Lumpur was on a charter flight that the cruise line arranged. So that brings me to why I am here in Kuala Lumpur airport under detention. As soon as the plane landed here, everyone on the plane, which was 100% people from our cruise ship, were detained in a special room where they would not let us collect our baggage, they would not us make any connecting flights, they just didn't seem to know what to do except the people were told to keep us in that room. Now all of us could have made our flight connections if there wasn't this big detainment. They detained us so long that most of us missed our flights. Only a few people were able to make their flight connections. So from the holding room they brought us up here to this you might call a detention center. <laughs> it's actually a very nice luxurious upgrade lounge with free food and drinks. But still I have not been able to collect my baggage which I'm not going to be able to for what reason I'm not sure and as you can tell I haven't shaved for a couple days. <laughs> so my flight headed back home is delayed 24 hours. I'm having to take the same flight as I was going to but one day later. So we spent overnight in this room sitting in chairs laying on the floor all night long which I did never got a wink of sleep. <laughs> it was just too uncomfortable for sleeping at least for me. Some people would did. I can't really sleep unless I'm comfortable. And the reason why we're here in detention at the airport is because the airport authorities found out that we were people from the cruise ship, the entire plane was, and they were afraid that we had sick people aboard. So they detained us to determine whether or not we were sick people or infected people, even though they've done no testing. So the whole thing is just stupid in so many ways. So late tonight I'm supposed to be heading to Tokyo to change planes and they're gonna fly me to Dallas Fort Worth. <laughs> and then I gotta make connections to fly me back to California. When the cruise line made these air reservations they said we don't want to hear about anybody wanting to do time or flight changes. We had to take whatever they gave us. So that's what I'm stuck with. So I found myself with a lot of time on my hands <laughs> to make this video. 
So all in all, even though I got my full cruise fare back, I really regret taking the cruise, which like I said in my last video, I regret taking it. And when I flew out from California, at that point, the scare had not started. So I had no way of knowing that anything was going to go wrong. But you know what? I am never going to go back to Asia. <laughs> this was to be my one and only time to see Asia, even though I only saw about half of what I wanted to see. I'm not coming back. I've had enough of Asia for the rest of my lifetime. There are so many other places that I'd rather go to. I've seen enough of Asia. And I am really looking forward to getting back on the road in my motor home where I have a lot more control of my life. I am going to do more cruises, at least one cruise a year I would like to do. But the rest of my cruises are probably going to be around Europe. I have not seen much of Europe so far, so that's where I'm going to be focused with future cruises. So I hope you found this video interesting and informative. Let me know what you think about all this. Good day, folks.